okay? So today is a Desmos day. Raise your hand if you've never experienced Desmos before. Oh, you are, this is, this is gonna be such a treat for you. Who, who here has experienced Desmos? Are the people in for a treat? You are in for a treat. This is gonna change your life. I know sometimes we go to these sessions and you go to a conference session, you think, okay, I'm gonna take the materials, I'm gonna put in a folder somewhere and I'll come back to it, whatever. You will leave here and you're gonna use this next week. Monday, you're gonna be like, you, all your other things are gonna go out the window. Um, so a little bit about myself, I'm Bob Lochel, I teach at Happer Horsham High School just down the road. Um, I, I'm a, an officer in a group we have down there called ATMAPAV, Association, Association of Teachers of Mathematics of Philadelphia and Vicinity. I didn't write the acronym, it just is what it is. Um, but that's how I found out about this one. We like to do some reciprocity and kind of trade people now and then. And from what I see so far, this is a, a, a great crowd. You never know if you're gonna get five people or 20 people. My website will have a lot of files and links today. We'll be using it a lot. You may wanna get on your browser now. Everything I'm gonna to do today plus more is there, okay? Twitter, I'm a huge Twitter fan. In fact, I already tweeted about how I got lost getting here and in Jersey, two wrong turns do really make a right. Everything is wonderful, I think, in terms of technology. So I'm a big Twitter guy. I would also um, ask you to follow Desmos as well. Desmos, at Desmos. I talk to them on Twitter all the time. I shared with them a file yesterday. And sometimes what happens is they'll take your stuff and make it a little bit better. They'll add some stuff to it. They are really eager to see how teachers use this. And my blog, not just with Desmos, is filled with stuff that you can use, so feel free. Um, about myself, I've been teaching for 17 years. Primarily now I teach AP statistics. Oftentimes my plate are things like Algebra 2. I also teach a freshman prob stat class. It's kind of a let's clean up Algebra 1 and get the prob stat stuff kind of shoved in there type of thing. Um, but the last two years, I was an instructional coach in my district. Um, so the good part about that is you get to kind of roam around and show people these neat tools and you hope implement them. Uh, but by choice, I thought I really need to be back in the classroom. So I'm back in the classroom and I wanna share this with you. I, I suspect that many of you and your schools are like me. First of all, how many people are middle or high school teachers here? Do I have like college people here? Are they here as well? So you're all, uh, a couple of them, they're like, oh yeah, we're hearing for you. If you're like me in your department, what has probably happened in the last 10 years or so, you bought a lot of stuff. We all bought TI-84s, now I have a class set of Inspires. We bought software, we gotta have a geometer sketch pad, and I have Fathom for statistics, and we bought all these different things. So, come on in, because we thought it was best for kids. There's a couple computers right here, there's handouts in the front. Okay. We bought all this stuff. This is a very exciting time to be a math teacher. There are so many tools out there that you can use that are free. There are a lot of free tools out there, and this is one of them. Desmos, hopefully, will now replace a lot of what you do on a daily basis in your classroom. There's other tools like GeoGebra. How many people are GeoGebra users? The same guy uses Desmos. All these free tools, De uh, GeoGebra is like Sketchpad, except this one's free. Free is good, free is for me. Okay, that's what we said in the city. If it's for free, then it's for me. For statistics, StatKey is one. If you go to my blog, my most recent post is on something called StatKey. So a lot of these things where you had to pay money and get the site licenses and replace every couple years and update operating systems, you're starting to see this open source. And I'll tell you, I met the founder of Desmos last summer, Eli, and my question to him is, how's this business model gonna work? How can this possibly be free forever? Because my motivation was, if something's free right now and it's cool, I wanna get on that so when they start charging for it, I'm kinda on the gravy train. That was my motivation. Eli assures me this will be free. He wants this to be free. What he's trying to do is embed this into like state tests and products, and hopefully that's where the revenue stream will come from. So I'm hoping that this is something that stays around for a long time. So we have a lot of different activities today. This will be learn by doing. I'll try to split it up into maybe 15 minute chunks. The first one will encourage discovery. We're gonna look at on my blog what's the single biggest source of people getting to my blog. It's a conic sections project I do that will walk you through some of the basics. We're gonna look at sliders, links, and folders. We're gonna talk about how can kids use Desmos to explore things, and then how do you get responses from them to help generalize in mathematics. In the third part of the day, I'm gonna flat out just uh, shoplift an activity. Uh, the best part of teaching uh, is stealing things. I am going to steal an activity uh, from Eli, again, who's the founder, and he showed me this one last summer, and it's phenomenal. If we get to it, we're gonna talk about inserting pictures. I have a little something for our geometry friends, although I don't generally teach geometry. And then the rest of the time, whatever's left, if we just kind of an open house, questions and answers, that type of thing, we can do that as well. You ready to get started? There's one computer here if you need. Oh, okay, thank you, okay. So if you haven't already logged on, you're gonna go to desmos.com, 
And Desmos.com will give you this wonderful screen where they have all kinds of information. But what's of interest to you is the red, um, let's say enter calculator or something like that. Launch oh, launch calculator, whatever it is. I usually just bypass that anyway. And you'll get right to this wonderful big graphing calculator, okay? The idea of Desmos is it's simple. Think about all the time you spend on a TI. You gotta press this button. If you wanna change the window, you gotta press this button. Do you guys remember how to do stat plot? Oh, it's a shift key. A lot of that has been taken out here with Desmos. Pretty much what we're looking at is the left-hand side here. And again, I think I have a group that's largely new users. So I'll kind of take steps back and stop me if I need to go kind of backwards. But right in there, I can just type an equation in. Let's type in y equals uh, 3x plus 5. Da -da 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 -da. I get a nice line. Okay, that's cool. I can zoom in on the line. I have zoom in features over here on the right. I can zoom in if I want to. I can move it around by dragging it. I can zoom out a little bit. And if I ever get lost, I can just restore it to where I want. How do we move it? You can just drag, uh, you can zoom in, but you can just drag any piece of this. Oh, okay, you can't move the actual line. No, you can't, do, don't drag the line, drag the area, right, okay? You can drag the area. Now here's what's great, here's what I like. Desmos is pretty smart about this. They say, well, this is a line. They probably want some information about this. So, hey, look at this. Here's the y-intercept. If I click it, there it is, zero, five. So key things that kids would probably need are highlighted. Zero, five is the y-intercept. Down here, I got my x-intercept. Negative, so what, five-thirds? Negative five-thirds, zero is there. So things are fairly easy to get. In addition, if I want to take that, and now I want to get a table of values from it, I can do that. If I click this little guy here, and I'm gonna kind of pause it there so you can see. This is my settings wheel. See the little settings guy right here, okay? If you click him, this changes a little bit and I get some new options here. See what this does. Get a little table, go and click it, see what it does. We play with these things, okay? We click this, we get a little convert to table thing. So I have a table of values now if I want. So this replaces your little TI table, okay? And you can also put in any value you want. If you wanna figure out what's happening at negative 50, go ahead and figure out what's happening at negative 50. Okay, I just put 50, whatever, there we go. So I can figure out what's happening at 50 if I want to. I can put anything in here I want. It's kind of neat, easy so far, easy breezy? Good, good? Yes, sir? Okay, the hmm? number of values you have there, yeah, yeah. can you set the beginning and the end? You cannot. Okay. You cannot, you cannot make it count by a certain number, right. Okay. It does, uh, I, forget, I forget how it figures it. Feel free to chime in if you know. I don't know how it figures it. You seem to be the other user. How it figures out the table of values. I think it just kind of figures out where you are in the screen and does it, but you can't set the table of values. What I'm getting at is if you have a parabola, mm -hmm. you center those around the vertex. Let's find out. Let's do a parabola. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it has that like table set functionality, but let's put in a parabola, let's see. Let's put in a new function. So, and let's not make it Y this time. Another thing I like about Desmos, if you call it F of X, it, whoops. If you call it F of X, it knows you. F of X, it knows what that is, equals, let's do X squared, um, just minus three. So there's X squared minus three. There's my parabola. Bring it up the screen, oh yeah, it knows where the vertex is. The vertex is important, there it is. It's gonna give you the vertex, which happens to be the Y intercept here. It gives you the X intercepts, okay? I have another question. Yes, sir. Can you do, can, how would you do a restriction on that? Oh, we'll do that. Oh, we're gonna do restrictions. Yeah, that's, that's the next level. We're gonna do plenty of restrictions today. Yep. I, I have a simpler question. At the mm -hmm. top, like when I put in a negative value, can you then sort that so that the table goes back? No, the table has very limited functionality. Right. Yeah, the table is not meant, yeah. What, the overriding philosophy in Desmos, okay, is to keep things simple. They don't wanna cloud it up with a whole bunch of little things you need to know. So when you did the table for this one, where did it center? I'm curious now. I'm very curious where on this one, where it would center the, Table. Yeah, negative two as well. And I think that might be a function of the fact that zero is the middle. I wonder what would happen if I move that someplace else. Does it center around the middle point? It's still okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the table is, yeah, it's not real fun. It's, it's nice, but yeah, it doesn't have that table set feature yet, okay? Does not have the table set feature. So we have some nice things here, okay? Graph an inequality. Let's do an inequality. What if I have y is greater than? Now, you have a couple choices for greater than. Y is. If yours hasn't come up already, you've got this nice little keypad here of stuff, which on the iPad works pretty well. And you see I have my greater than sign here, and if you click more, there's your greater than or equal to sign. Do the greater than, because the greater than reveals something a little bit cooler, right? So it's the y is greater than uh, the opposite of x, I don't care what you put in, plus two, there it is. 
Oh, how nice is that? How much trouble is it for kids to see the dotted line on a TI and even to get that darn shading to work right? Well, you got a shade under, you got a shade, no, don't just shade the dang thing, there it is. And if you want to set up your own little system, go ahead and put another inequality in there and let's see what the colors do. So let's make one, so let's make one with a positive slope, maybe an X or like a 2X or something like that and let's see what happens. How did the colors work out? Does yellow and blue make green? Oh, this is red. Oh, we got to talk about changing colors too. You don't have to, you'll, it only gives you, and on this one, I don't think it's going to give you a table. Yeah, it's not going to give you a table option on that one. Because it would just be true falses. It would just be true false table, right? Yeah, just be true falses, right? Um, I do want to mention something else, and things will come to my mind as they come. We have red here. If you want to change the color, hold down this, hold down this button and see what it does. You can change the color of it. I'm going to make it purple. I can make it purple. So you have a six color palette there. To change if you just hold it down hold down the actual circle with the color you get some choices okay so if you want to make yellow and blue make green I don't know if they combine the colors in any logical way and they're really worried about it yellow and blue make green It'd be awful if yellow and blue made purple our art teacher friends would not be happy with us what's the yellow and blue make I don't know yeah what's that you lost the grid you went off the grid I have no idea what you did oh my god you I I suspect Suspect you zoomed really far. No, that's not what it is. Yeah, you can turn it off. Well, let's do that. You have some choices here while well, we got to it. Yeah. You have a wrench here, which will take care of a lot of setting stuff. So why don't we take a look at that while we have it? Since it comes up. Some neat things under the wrench. So labels, grid lines, axes. Here's something that's really great. Desmos listens to teachers. One of the most immediate feedback pieces they got was. It's neat, but kids in the back of the room can't see it. They added just this one little button, the projector mode. And you can see it on yours. Look at this. Boom. It just makes it. This is a small thing. If I'm printing out for quizzes and tests, I do a print screen of this in projector mode. And it makes this nice little graph paper. Some other things here. So things will, as things question comes up, we'll talk about them. I can change my window settings if I want to. Trig settings. Oh my God, it counts by pi. Let's count by pi and have some fun with that. Count by pi on the x-axis and zoom in a little bit and watch what these do. Who does this? It's counting by pi over 12s. Life is good. Our trig teacher, oh, no more. You have to take your axis and split pi out by something. No, 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 I got it. It's there. I will be honest. I walk through my building and I have a teacher who's te taught trig for 30 whatever someone years. She's near retirement. God bless her. She uses a smart board, so she is in tune with technology. And I walk by and she's still doing trig stuff using TI. She has a little emulator up there. I'm thinking, Desmos. I, wa I, walk, I seriously walk by a room and half the kids know Desmos because they had me already. I'll walk by, Desmos! And they, they, and they laugh, but she doesn't appreciate it too much. But yeah, it makes trig. It does it by trig. Oh my God, it counts by pies. How life, life is good. Okay. Where I use this, in Algebra 2, we do something called the Conic Sections Project. And if you're not an Algebra 2 teacher, this is still adaptable to Algebra 1 or even pre-algebra. I've seen teachers do this. Um, this actually started about 15 years ago. I had a colleague who's long since retired. At the end of the year, that's when he got the Conics in June, they did the Conic Sections Project. And the Conic Sections Project was just take circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas, draw something. I don't care what it is. Well, back in those days, the only thing we had was this little DOS program. Um, and you had to go to the lab, you couldn't save a thing. There were three colors, um, black, white, cyan, which is blue, and I think it was a purple too, so maybe it was four colors, but black was the default. That was it, and you couldn't save. So the kids had 40 minutes to go there, they had to think ahead and plan. And if, if we were lucky, we got kids who would do the, an eyeball, okay? or I'd get kids who would make a tree with a little um, knot in it, and that's about the extent of what we got. We did that for you know about 10 years or so. All right, you made a picture. And, it was in June, so we were happy to get anything out of them. And then a couple years later, we got a computer program, Math Exploration Toolkit, that came from some publisher, I forget where, and it was nice. Uh, it allowed them to put multiple ones in, they could edit, they could get rid of them, they couldn't use it at home, however, um, and they would then take that, and we'd have them put it into paint and play around with it a little bit, okay? So we had this next thing. Three, this is the third year we've used Desmos for this project. So before, we had Stone Ages, and then we got, oh, we got some nice pictures that maybe had 10 or so equations. We now get things from kids that have over 100 equations, 
I'm gonna show you one that has over 200 equations in it and how sophisticated they are and how wonderful they are. So I'm gonna go through a mini vert. Where's the ledge for this? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm looking around like an idiot. There you go, there it is. Um, I'm gonna show you a mini version of this. We're just gonna make an eyeball, just real quickly, and that's gonna to get to the domain restrictions, whoever was asking about it. And then I'm gonna show you some student work, and this is gonna blow your mind. Um, so we're gonna start a new graph altogether. Now the way you start new, I'm logged in. If you don't have an account, you're gonna to wanna to start an account today, maybe later. Guys, there's, there's copies there. There's one computer up there if you wanna share, but I think that's about it. And there's one here, both sides of the room here. If you want to start an account, it's great. The beauty of starting an account is I can save all of these. I have a whole bank of these saved, okay? We're going to start a new one. Just take these three little lines here. It's hard to see, and it'll say start new graph. New blank graph, okay? So here's my vision, okay? We're going to make an eyeball here. So I envision an ellipse eyeball with an eyelid. We're going to have to restrict and maybe circle inside that we're gonna color in. And if we get ambitious, we'll put a little eyebrow on it. So we'll put a little unibrow or something on them or something like that, okay? So I'm envisioning ellipse here. Now, those of you who don't teach algebra two or haven't for a while, you can just kind of watch and see. So I'm looking here that maybe my center is around negative five, five. It's gonna go over maybe around four or so. It's gonna go up or down maybe two, but I'll be able to change it. So to remind you guys what that equation has to be, I want uh, x plus five squared x plus 5 squared. I need to get out of that exponent. How do I get out of the exponent? What do you think? Right. Yeah, just right click out of it. I move over. Divided by, uh, how far did I say I want to be? 4. So we'll do it divided by 16. Uh, I just use a slash. Oh. Yeah, I just use a slash. Or I have it down here. Okay? Divide by 16. Oh, look at that nice function setting notation. And then I arrowed over, so I'm out of the fraction. Plus. Plus, uh, let's see, y, what am I going to do? y minus, where's my y at? y minus 5 as well, squared. If you mess up, it's OK. Go back and edit. Divided by maybe 4, and we're going to make that equal 1. So I'll leave that up there for effect. I'll pause for effect. Oh, it's in parentheses. Yeah, so there's my eyeball. We've got to put things in parentheses. And eventually, I could put another one over here, and I see a nose I could put here, and I could put a mouth here, right? Okay. Now, I want to do an eyelid, so here's my vision. I want to take this ellipse again, and I really just want to do another one that kind of overlaps it right here, and that'll end up being the eyelid. So I want to keep the X part the same, but I want to drop this Y down just a little bit. Guys, I think we have a full house, but there's copies here, and you're welcome to kind of mingle in the back or do whatever. Welcome, okay? So we're just going to move it down a little bit. So let's make a new one. And again, if you don't recall your algebra two, this is one of those things I'm doing really fast. Yeah, and actually, if you have, well, there's not enough chairs, but if you have a device and you're welcome to, willing to give it up to someone who needs a computer, I don't know how we can finagle that. We'll make it work. Here, oh, thank you, my friend. Come over here and take yeah, there's one there. So let's do a little movement. I, I appreciate it. We're, someone just take this, this we're very popular today, apparently. It's the place to be. How did you make yours red? Uh, you can change it. Uh, it just defaulted to red somehow, but if I click this and hold it down, it will give you the color change. Okay, so you got that? and in projector mode. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. I want another one where I move it down. So let's do x plus five squared plus uh, y minus four this time because that'll serve to move it down a little bit. Oh, I didn't do, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't divide. You guys gotta stop me when I don't divide. Divide by 16 and then divide by four, right? Equals one. Notice how easy it was to go back and edit. Could you copy too? Could you, copy? you can't copy. Oh. Yeah, can't copy. Is that, we think, think about that, too low, too high? That's gonna be my eyelid. We could always play with it. But the problem is, I don't want the holy lips. And back in the day when we were using uh, Math Exploration Toolkit, oh, uh, you know, I have a video camera there behind you, sir. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, just kinda watch that tripod, that's okay. You're in the video. Your wonderful jacket is in the video. <laughs> Oh, no, it's okay. No, it's fine. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Great. So under the old Math Exploration Toolkit, we told kids to put this in the paint, and they just used a little delete, a little eraser to do it. Here's what I'm going to do here. Here's our re domain restriction. Do you think it'd be easier to restrict by X or by Y here? I think it'd be easier to be a domain restriction or a range restriction here? What do you think? If I only want, I just want this piece of blue to be my eyelid. I want the rest of this gone. Should I restrict the domain and the range? The, yeah, the range. And notice the vocabulary. 
How often do we have a ch chance to talk about domain and range? It's the same thing in Algebra 1. If I have a line, oh, I don't really want to go in the negative territory. I want to restrict the, re the range. So I'm looking at this. This looks like it's right around 4.5 to me. I could click that and find out. Here's how you restrict it. Okay? Right at the end of it, notice my cursor is blinking after the 1. I'm going to put a bracket. Put a bracket. And I'm only interested in y being greater than 4.5. Oh, 4.5, not 4 comma 5, 4.5. Oh, easy breezy. Look at this. Have we need easy restrictions. You can restrict by x, you can restrict by y. If I wanted to restrict by x, yeah, yeah, you want to see it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, notice how it kind of slides over when it's too far. I lost my graph. I totally lost my graph. Do the little home button. Maybe that gets it back to you. Yeah, I'll come around to you. Okay. So we have it there. So restricting is great. So we have these little pieces here. And now I want to put an eyeball in this piece here, OK? So eyeball, I'm going to center it somewhere around. Let's center it right around here. So I'm going to center it around negative 4, 4.5, somewhere around there. I'm not quite sure about the radius, but I can always play with it a little bit. So let's make a circle. Let's say we will do x plus 4.5 squared plus y minus, how high did I say I was going to go? Oh, that was the, well, we'll do 4.5 there, too. If I have to adjust these, that's OK. Equals, and that, well, get that squared out of there, you little booger. Get out of there. Squared equals, I got to guess the radius. It looks like it's a little bit bigger than 1, 1 1.2-ish. If I square that, I'm going to say 3 just for giggles, and I'm going to see what it does. It doesn't like this little squared thing that I had here. It's delete you out of there, you little booger. There it goes. All right, so what do we think? Too big, too small? Too big, so three, radius too big, and this is what kids do. Maybe 2.5, too big, 2.1, maybe two. Oh, there you go, that's not bad. Oh, there's my eyeball, okay? Got a nice little eyeball, that actually came up pretty well. I'm very proud of myself that I did that so ad hoc. <laughs> I have to be honest, it doesn't work out that way. Oh, but wait a minute, maybe I wanna fill it in. What if I'm in a blue eye? How could I fill it in? How could I fill it in? Inequality, think mathematically. How could I fill that in? If I made it an inequality, what if instead of an equals, what would I have to put it as? If I wanted to fill it in? Less than. Less than. Try a less than. Yeah, we can play around the inequalities a little bit. We got that guy. And if we make it less than, it's got dotted lines around it, so there's a little bloodshot. There we go. Or you can make it red. I don't care. So it's nice, right? It's a pretty good eyeball, OK? And this is what kids are doing with this, OK? Kids are restricting domains. I've had kids make, again, over 100 functions, or equations, not functions, equations, and they restrict every single one. They restrict the pieces, OK? I'm looking at the clock, and we have a lot to get to here. What kind of function could we make for like a brow or something like that? Sine, I've seen kids do a little sine curve here. You could make it like really compressed, so you have that really thing going on. If you're in algebra one, excuse me, maybe we do like a, an absolute value thing here to make it look a little bit more evil, OK? So we have some choice, and then we have to play around with that A and see what A is doing. Yeah, yeah, I'll show it up here. Yeah, notice how it kind of moves out once you do it. So the restriction piece, yeah, this is, this is one of those little tricky things. In braces, that's where you put restrictions at the end, OK? Y is greater than. And you could also do an X right after it. So you said to change the color of the eyeball, you would click on that? Yep, to change colors, I'm going to hold this down. Whoops. Oh, oh, let me say it again. If I click this, I can click it on and off. And I can hold it down, I can change colors now. So if I want him to be bloodshot for real, there he goes. He's good, he's nice. Okay. Let me show you some things that kids have done with this. So if I go to, this is where I'm going to my web page. You can choose to go there or not. This is under my web page. This is one a student did two years ago. Now, at that time, we used to have them, uh, they had to print it out on Desmos. So this one kind of has the grid. And then they had to print out the lines removed, which we didn't realize you could just get rid of the lines and, on there. Um, we also made them print out the equation because we were sick. Um, and you can see how many there were. I don't make them print out the equations anymore. Does anyone here use Edmodo? Oh, I have to put Edmodo up. Ed, Edmodo. No one here uses Edmodo? One, one person? Edmodo is a free, it's like Facebook for a class. Is that a good synopsis? Facebook for a class, I'd have to sign in and everything. If we have a break, I'm going to sign into Edmodo. You can put assignments there. You can put videos there. If I do a flip video, that's where I post it. I can also have kids turn things in. And all they turn into me, if I go to Desmos, I can make a link out of this. Let me save it. Let's call it uh, eyeball. 
What's beautiful is under here, share graph, it gives me a link that I can share with my teacher. I just have them share the links. That's all I do now, share the links. And that's my archive of it, okay? So let me show you a couple things on my webpage about it. First of all, here are a couple student projects from last semester. This one, I don't know which, oh, this is the monkey. There's a lot of equations here. I can make folders. Yeah, I haven't shown you folders yet. You're gonna see folders in a minute. They made a monkey. We have not seen folders yet. That's gonna be the next piece because you can take these things and drag them in neat little folders. And they started, and folders didn't exist last year. So this was a big thing. They can take the pieces and I can see what they did. So the nose is here. And I can also turn off these so I can see the nose. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And think of all the restrictions in there. Everything here, pretty much everything has, that one doesn't, has a restriction, okay? But it's neat to have tools, but we want kids really to think about the math. It's easy to get lost in the tools. We want them thinking mathematically. Why did you restrict that? Why did you choose to make a circle? Why an ellipse? So another piece I added to this this year is I told all the kids they need to make, I said 60 seconds or 90 seconds, which freaked them out. A 60 second video which explained one aspect of their picture and why they did what they did. And I have it for this student here. It's on my webpage. I'm gonna play it. I have really rinky-dink speakers here. So we'll see how this works out. But here's this student's, uh, I think she's two minutes, two minute video about why she did what she did with Desmos. And I'll point out that she did it using something called Screencast-O-Matic. Anyone Screencast-O-Matic fan? Screencast-O-Matic, another free tool. It will take a picture, actually a video of your screen. It'll record any movement on your screen. Screencast-O-Matic, it will record any movement on your screen. If you go to my blog, I have a whole uh, page of webcasting tools. Things like Screencast-O-Matic. So again, it's on my blog. Here's this student, we'll see how well this plays. Let's make sure the volume's up. And apparently it's like, oh, there she goes. All right, there she goes. Um, the first thing I did, if I scroll up here. She's going to focus on the hand. The first thing I did was I added a, like a part of a circle to form like a wrist, you can see here. Um, the center is was basically gotten by guess and check and just fooling around Why with the radius it? to make it fit the hands. Put that back in. Um, each finger is a hyperbola, so you can see over here with the minus. They're, and they're all the exact same hyperbola, so they're parallel in a sense. And if I turn off the domain, you can see that it's a hyperbola, and here's the second half, but I got rid of it. Are you justifying the use? Better I could, Talking about um, the pieces? Awesome. I it better than a parabola, and I just liked it, the slopeness of it. And each one the is about 0.3 mm -hmm. away from each other. I just thought that was a good finger length. And the last one's just 0.4, just because it fit that way. And the thumb is about a third of a circle. And I inserted it in to make it look like the thumb was wrapping around the banana or pea plant or whatever it is holding. And then it's just a simple line going down. Don't they fly with this stuff when you give them the opportunity? And at the end of the fingers are little circles here. And I just line them up on them. Basically, when x is greater than or equal to 23, so they can line up with the end of the fingers to make them look like, more like fingers and less like stubby nubs. Stubby nubs, I like that. And the banana pea plant thing is actually just an ellipse with, um, that I had to cut in half so I could have two different domain and ranges. But you had to cut it off right here, so subtle. Cut it off right there. 12, and this one ended at about roughly 13. And I didn't want to like mess with the picture, so I just cut it into two and made two different ones. Two halves, two halves and of the ellipse. And the last thing is just a simple straight down the center line. Um, this is my monkey's hands. They were so unhappy that they had to do a video. They're like, what do you want from us? What do you want us to do? What, what else what am I being asked to do here? Why? I don't know what those are. All right, let's get rid of those. But that is on my webpage. Um, I actually did a webinar for the Desmos folks um, sometime last year. That's 45 minutes that explains the Connect Sections project in detail. Um, again, if you go to my blog, you can find it. Uh, if you look on YouTube and do Desmos Connect Sections, you'll find it. Um, but I've seen teachers do this in Algebra 1. So if you take lines and absolute values, and maybe you know a little bit about quadratics at that point. Um, so I've seen teachers do that. That's just part one of our, of our day. Can we move on to part two? Okay, let's move on to part two. Part two now is gonna add some new ideas. We're gonna talk about sliders, folders, and then how do we encourage discovery. It's again neat to have a tool, but we want to encourage the mathematics. What I'm about to do is not on any sheet given to you. Okay? So here's what I did with my Algebra 2 class. 
How many Algebra 2, 1, 2 teachers do I have here? Okay, a lot of you guys. At some point, we talk about quadratics, and we have to talk about vertex form versus quadratic form. We have to talk about the pieces and how they are. And some, maybe sometimes we memorize it, sometimes we just do a lot on the graphing calculator, but how can we really encourage the generalization of this? I'm going to show you in Desmos how you can do that. So go ahead and make yourself a new um, sketch, or what do we call them in these things? What do they call these things? A new graph? New blank graph? We make a brand new one? Okay. And start off by typing in any quadratic you want in standard form. So maybe y equals 2x squared plus 3x, whatever you want in, in standard form. So I got y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. Whoops, what did I do wrong? Oh, the squared is wrong. Okay. okay. I'm getting a line. Yeah, you put the squared in. Okay, there it is. Okay, and what I used to do in Algebra 1 is I'd put maybe five or six on the board and I'd say compare, contrast, and see what the group came up with. Is that kind of similar to what we do in Algebra 2? You have a whole bunch, and, and maybe you give the same one over and over, but just C has changed. Oh, C goes up and down. Oh, okay. B, you never figure out what B does, and we hope that they figure out A does. I, I, don't, I have to remember the camera's on. I have a re uh, colleague who's since retired, he used to do the parabola ballet with A. So A goes like this and shrinks into that part's not on the camera. Okay, there it is. It's now going to be on YouTube forever, but whatever. And if it's upside down, he goes da, 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 whatever. So that's how we used to do it. Here's what's cool about this. If you tell it, forget threes. If you put in just parameters, if you tell it A X squared plus B X plus C, what is it asking you to do? What's it inviting you to do? That's sliders. Ooh. All, 30 seconds of playtime. Change your life. Oh, the Desmos gods have shined down upon you. Oh my God, I heard it. Someone's been converted. Say hallelujah. <laughs> there will be a collection basket later, by the way. Yeah, if you click this, you get all, you get these great little sliders that I can now move around and I can see what A does. B, we never know what the heck it does. And we can see what C does, right? We can play around. So it's better doing just two separate, 10 separate equations where we're going to type them all in and see what they do. Or are we going to play a little bit? We're going to play. Okay? So this is our standard form. Okay? Now, one little change here. We're about to do it in vertex form, and there's one little problem here. If I try to do it in vertex form, A parentheses x minus h squared plus k, I'm going to use A again, and it's not going to ask me to do another slider. And I really don't want my kids to know at this point that A is A. I would like to be separate. Um, I have to think around this a little bit. I'm actually going to make another one. I'm actually going to, if you want to get rid of equations, I'm just going to X these guys out. I don't want them anymore. We're going to start from scratch. I hate to start from scratch, but I've got to fix something here. I need to make these A's different. Okay? So here's what I'm going to put in. Y equals, I'm going to make it A sub 1. Okay? The way you make a sub, it's the underscore. It's shift the little dash key, right? Underscore a sub 1 uh, x squared plus bx plus c. Now I can add all the sliders. Now that is standard form. Okay? What I'd like to do, I'm going to do two things. I'd like to call this standard form. I'd like to call it standard form. I'd like to collect it all in a folder. So here's where folders come in. Here's how you do a folder. If you haven't already, I'm not even touched on this yet. Click this little plus sign up here. Look at the things available to you. Yep. Underscore, yeah, underscore. I honestly forgot how to do that until my last conference and someone, oh, you have to do underscore. And it's not one I remember all that often. Underscore does a little subscript, okay? Under here, I have some stuff I can do. Uh, is everyone okay? Do I need to stop for a minute? Pause for effect. All's good? We're gonna start a folder and let's call this one standard form. Standard, not standards, we're not in testing. Standard form, standard form. Yeah, everyone figure out the underscore. I hear the buzz. That seems to be the buzz of the room, right? Oh, yeah. I should never. I use my iPad with this a lot because I'll stand up there. I never really. What do you have to do with it? ABC doesn't. Oh, it's there somewhere. If you use this on the iPad, it gives you a separate. Oh no, it doesn't. It's the same thing. You just you have to press the ABC button. Yeah, I never even thought about it on an iPad before. Okay? Standard form. Now, right now, these are not in the folder. The way you get them in the folder, this is very subtle. You're going to take this little side piece, the gray portion of it, and drag it up a little bit and watch what happens. Drag it up just a little bit, and you're going to see a little line appear. You see what I'm talking about? You're going to make a little line appear. 
That means this is now, right, see it right now? That's in that folder. So I'm gonna drag all of these things in that folder. So I'm gonna drag them all in that folder. Am I okay? Can I get a thumbs up if you're okay? Because I'm trying to sense the room. I got a lot of people, okay, I'm just trying to, because I know a lot of people are helping each other, and I'm, if you wanna go off the board, feel free. <laughs> Okay. No, you have to do it my way. No, I don't mind if you go off the board. To close the folder up, this little triangle, it's all in standard form. It's all in that folder. See the little triangle I'm clicking? Standard form. So why don't I give you this challenge for the next three minutes? Can you make vertex form using A sub 2 and put it into a folder? So can, can you do vertex form? You have to use A sub 2 now and put it into a folder. I'll do it up here in a minute. But why don't you try that on your own? If you want to wait for me, you can wait for me. And I'll kind of come around and take questions yeah, if there are any. Yeah, it makes just little lines, yeah. Are you, who's, are you okay or not? It's not, oh, you're on the iPad. Oh, you think it's a computer? It could be Chrome. Oh, you think it's Chrome? Okay. You think it's Chrome? Are we okay? You got it okay? Oh, blah, we're gonna call it blah. There we go. And you drag it up there. Uh, dude, it's the underscore right here, so you need the shift to get to it. And I can do a one, and then you're gonna arrow out of it. And, ooh, what happened there? Oh, what happened there? Uh-oh. You broke the internet. I have no idea what you did. Well, well, hopefully we can just watch each other. Are we okay? Okay? You're not okay? Where are we at? Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Well, you can do the same thing with y equals mx plus b, right? So if you click this little plus sign here, we can make a folder. We're going to put it in a folder. Okay. And we're going to call that standard form. Type the word standard form, yep. And now these guys, see this little gray area right here? You're going to drag that up slightly. Next to the red dot, the little gray area. Yeah. Don't drag the dot, but the gray area below it. Drag it up slightly. Let it go. See how it made it? Come down a little bit. See that little line? That's what you want. That means it's in the folder. That little line means it's in the folder. Yeah. These, uh, let me open this up. These little lines, these little lines, if they appear, that means these things are in that folder. You only have to drag it up a little bit and they automatically connect. They're like Legos. And if you collapse the folder, it all goes with it. Yeah. So as long as they have those lines next to it, they're on the folder, right? Yep. Oh, uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, I really have no idea what that is. Um, I really have no idea why that's a coordinate axis. I would be tempted to start over. I have no. Is this right here? Is there any show any I have no solution to it. I would just start a new one. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna start a new one and let's see what happens. I have no idea why that happened on yours. Uh, up on the bar, we're gonna make Desmos.com. Okay, so let me get myself started with uh, vertex form. Vertex form, let me get myself ready. So I want y equals a sub two, x minus h uh, squared plus k. I want sliders for all of them. And now I have that form ready to go. I'm gonna make a folder for vertex form. Vertex form, whoops, vertex form. And I got standard form and vertex form. Got two of them. Okay. How yep. Did you, did you add the knife then? To get the vertex. How did I get this piece of the folder? The, the folder. I made a new folder. All right. Came up to plus, made a new folder. Yep. Up to plus, made a new folder. Okay. This is definitely something you're going to want to play with later. Okay. okay. So now here's my question. Here's my question. These are nice little demonstrations. But how do we get kids to use these effectively to learn the mathematical lessons we want? It's nice to make these little things. I could make a link for this and share it, and I'll share it on my webpage with kids. And I'll say, your job is, I'll put the link there. They can access this. Your job is to explore and tell me what you see. But how do we now make that link from, okay, we're playing with Desmos, to the mathematical things we want them to say? That they understand C is a vertical translation, okay? that a, uh, HK is the vertex. How do we do those? Here's what I do with it. Does anyone here ever use Padlet? Oh, another free tool, Padlet's awesome. Okay, here's how I'm gonna do this. If you go to my webpage, and you don't all have to do it, if you wanna partner up for this, that's great. If you go to my webpage, I have here already set up for you, 
we're gonna do something called a quadratic wall. Go ahead and click this. It says our quadratic wall. Uh, Hapro-Horsham.org backslash low shell, L-O-C-H-E-L. I'll write it up here. It's on the, the handout. Uh, www.hapro-horsham.org backslash low shell. Because here's the beautiful thing. Even if you can't make these on your own, I've shared a lot of them on my webpage. And I'll show you another place I've shared them. All you have to do is give them the link and they can play. So if you go there, I went to Desmos Resources. Here's all this stuff from today. Here's the picture of the uh, tiger. Go to our quadratic wall and see what that does. See what that does. There's an air conditioner right here. See what that does. Padlet's kind of neat. Okay. And here's what I do in my classroom with this. I just recently did it for absolute values. You're supposed to get a new page. You should get this. And here's what Padlet does. It's a big wall where you can contribute ideas. So this is quadratic functions. How do the parameters determine the graph? We have standard form versus vertex form. What you're able to do, click anywhere you want. You can start a box. I would ask you to put your name and tell me anything you've discovered about quadratic form, whether it's standard form or vertex form. Tell me what A does, tell me what B does, tell me what C does, or tell me what H, or, or uh, I left out K there, or H, so Kristen's already double clicked. Is it a click or a double click, Kristen? I always forget. Double, double click. You double click, you can make a box, Michael's here. Tell me anything you observe, anything you notice, and it does in real time, everyone's ideas start to appear up here. So I'll have kids in one tab, where they have the Desmos file, and in another tab, they have um, this. And we can start putting these in there. Now, again, because of time, I'm gonna let this run for maybe two minutes and I'll show you what the kids say. But I want kids to say, tell me what do they see with H, H, A, H, and K. You should be able to type something in the next line, right? Okay. As they're doing that, I'll point out to you something I can do is I actually have a piece here where if they didn't do it, the Desmos link is here for them. So I can put the link right within Padlet. So Padlet is this great way of sharing ideas. Tonight for homework, your job is to tell me what H and K do. And they all put it in there. And we can evaluate each other's responses. We can critique reasoning. C translates the graph up and down. Awesome, I like that, translate, I like that word. H moves the graph left and right. Oh, great, we didn't know that before. H moves it left and right. And I as a teacher, I'll start taking these, I'll start moving them around. I'll put all the ones that are standard form under the standard form side. I'll put all the ones that are vertex form under the vertex form side. And we'll move them around, okay? I wanna show you how kids, that'll stay open. Here's how kids respond to this. Do I have, I think I have this open. Oh, there it is. This is kids, this is my algebra two class. And it is hard to look through all of them. Yes, they'll get silly. They will get silly, it's gonna happen. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. So we talk about language, okay? No login for it. Okay. HK is the coordinate vertex form for a parabola's vertex. So we'll look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll get rid of misconceptions. We'll summarize, and these become the notes. The best part of these become the notes. I don't have to ramble out the notes. I just have to facilitate the summary of the notes, right? Okay, I like doing Padlet for a lot of things. It's a cool way to get kids to communicate with each other. You can use that for live. Padlet's good for a lot of stuff. It's free, another free tool. Lots of free tools out there. Padlet is a good one, free. I have a lot of different walls. Um, let me show you some of my walls. Where's my wall stuff? Uh, here's all my walls. There's all kinds of uh, domains. I actually don't know. R rational functions, we did the same thing. So I have a lot of different walls. Yep. I do not. I do not. Um, it's funny, again, I, I was a coach for the last two years. I decided to come back to the classroom. So they had to decide where to put me. So they put me in a room where I'm nowhere near, there's a, a computer lab, a floor below me that I'm at the mercy of getting there. And I actually wrote a grant for a colleague to get a netbook cart and he's upstairs. So I oftentimes steal his. So I do not on a daily basis have stuff. So sometimes I have to kind of move around. Yeah, I'm not one to one. It's not like we're flush with it. I'm at the mercy of whatever's available, okay? Um, so yeah, you just make it work as best as you can, okay? Let's do one last thing with this quadratic and vertex form. Think of this as an activity for kids. I want to challenge you to set these so they coincide. I'm challenging you, and if you have the whole, you have to have the whole thing done. Can you make them coincide? Can you make a vertex form and a standard form graph coincide? Think about all the little pieces that go into that. Can you move the sliders so that the standard form and the vertex form coincide with each other? That's not easy. For some people it'll be easy. 
If you really wanted to trip him up, you could tell him that A, he's not allowed to be one, and that would trip him up even more, but can you move these around so that the parabolas coincide? And that's not easy. Yeah, what's happening here? When he creates this is an arc. Yeah, yeah. When he creates a new fold of a vertex form, where do you put the equation? And I don't know where your grid went. Where where, where do you put the equation? Uh, you yeah. just put. I'll just. I'll move these into. The, they're not in the folder yet, okay. unless I'm missing the lines. So you drag. See the gray space by the purple dot. Just drag it up slightly. Yeah. Now it's in the folder. That make no stop. Move down. Will you see that little line there next to Y? That's in the folder. That's the indication that's in the folder. Yeah, I don't, I'm seeing some issues with people on Chrome and that the grid's disappearing. I think that's really just a function of the room or something. That's an unusual event. So I think it must be a function of the... Yeah, we got some, we got some computer issues. Okay? So to end this piece, think about all the discussions about coincide. This is equivalent to this. If I multiply this, do I get this? If I multiply out that binomial, are they equal to each other? Okay. Is the Padlet outside of the Desmos? Is Padlet is outside of Desmos. It's totally separate entity. Yep. Those pe people in the room clicked it. People in the room contributed. Yeah, and you don't have to log in or anything like that. Nope. The kids who contribute do not need an account on Padlet. They can just click. Okay, we've done two of the many goals today, and I gotta be cognizant of the clock. First goal was to do basic stuff, show you the conic sections project. Phase two was sliders and folders. Sliders, sliders are gonna change your world. Those you teach algebra one, y equals mx plus b, will never be the same because you're gonna slide all over the place. Think about how you could slide those to talk about parallels, perpendiculars, solutions to a system, okay? You can use sliders for those now. Kids can explore and see what's happening. I wanna do the third piece of this now, and this is the part where I'm totally shoplifting an activity from Eli Lubroff, who is the founder of Desmos. Just real quickly about Eli. Eli is sickeningly young. Um, he made this, this tool, and again, he says, for those of you who came in late, he swears it'll be free for as long as he has it. Um, but it is a pretty cool tool. This is something I saw him do last summer. I really wasn't expecting this many people, so we're gonna have to deal. I have up here, this is gonna require a little movement. Partnerships, or maybe threes, because we have so many people, or even fours, are gonna need a tape measure and a balloon. So you can't go anywhere, a teacher can't go anywhere without their stuff, right? So I have balloons in the bag here, so come on up and grab stuff. Maybe teams of four, because um, I don't have enough tape measures. But teams of four, maybe every row, grab a tape measure, grab a balloon, I'll tell you what to do with it. Come on up, guys, don't be shy. Come grab some stuff. Come on up, don't be shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have that many tape measures. We might have to share the tape measures a little bit. One tape, one balloon? Yeah, one tape, one balloon. You want more than one balloon, get more than one balloon. Yeah, I think I only have like five or six tape measures, so some of you might have to just watch and observe. We'll see. I have, or you can share the tape measures as best as you can. Okay? Yeah, you can share them amongst rows. You can still balloon. You can see if you can get a tape measure off of someone. But if you just want a balloon because you want a balloon, you got a balloon. There you go. All right. Here's my challenge to you for those of you who have it for the next, let's see if we can do this in three minutes. Three minutes. You will need some scrap paper to record some data here. You'll need a scrap paper to record some data. Yeah, if you want to do it with a group, you can. Yep. Here's your challenge. One person is going to blow up the balloon. You are going to blow the balloon five times. It will get increasingly larger and larger and larger. The person with the tape measure, your job is to measure the size of the balloon after each of five puffs. After each of five puffs, the other person measures the size of the balloon. Which way, anyway? Okay. Teacher earmuffs. <laughs> Do I have any education students in the room? No, they're all teachers. Yeah, teacher earmuffs. Measure the size of the balloon, not in specific directions on purpose. There we go, okay? So again, you're gonna do it five times, and my people are blowing it up. When you're done, don't release it. Just kind of hold it, and I'll tell you what I do with it. All right, you got it. Let's see if we can do that in three minutes. I'm sorry, five puffs, five puffs. But you gotta measure after every puff. Did he measure? You gotta measure after every puff, right? Five, every puff, each of the puff has to be measured, and then a total of five puffs. But you have to do it five times. So one, measure. Two, it gets bigger and measure. Yep.
which is exactly what happened in the classroom. <laughs> Where are my graphs at? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oops. Zero <laughs> All right, right, I think we're just about there. You got all five puffs? Yeah. Right? Don't let the smokers do it, people. We're in your class, you'll find out who the smokers are. No, I don't like how. Did you like how? Because here's what is everyone, is everyone still measuring? Yes. Okay. Because here's what I do with kids I say, hold on to it, hold on, because you know they're going to do something stupid to the balloon, right? Once it's all puffed up. Okay. Say, so hold on, balloon, hold on, balloon. Yep. Is that the last one? Okay. So all everyone has a balloon, hold it up. Hold it up, hold it up. On the count of three, we're going to have a launch party. Oh, actually, count that. Three, two, one, launch party. There we go. That's what we do with kids. We do a little launch party. And, then, and we have a 30 seconds of stupidity, and now we're back to math again, right? Okay, because you know they're going to be like making fart noises with it or whatever they're going to do, okay? All right. If you don't have data, that's okay. We're going to steal someone else's. So this is the data analysis piece. And again, as a stat teacher, we want to be able to model things using an appropriate function. So I've started a new Desmos graph. New Desmos graph. I'm going to put this data in a table. So I'm going to start under the plus sign with a table, an XY table. So since there's no function defined, I think it's just your computer. It should show automatic. I think it's just a function of your computer. Yeah. A number of, a number of people seem to have lost a grid. I have no, some of you guys have gone off the grid. I have no explanation for that. Yeah, I really have none. Besides, it's a Chrome or building issue. Okay? So here's what I need. I need someone to contribute their data. So after one puff, can you guys in the front tell me, after one puff, how big was it? 45.7. 45.7? All right, we're not going to put centimeters in, but that's okay. After two, you had? 59. 59. After three, you had 61.5. 61.5. After four, you had 69.5. 69.5. Uh, and five is 75. And I'm also going to put zero, zero in there. Zero, zero is also a point here. After zero, we had zero. Okay? Okay, I'll give you a minute to get it on the table. I was not specific about centimeters or inches. It turns out it doesn't matter. But notice I did not give specific instruction about, you have to do it around the middle. It's got to be, I don't care. Most kids will figure out it's got to be the girth, the maximum as best as we can. Um, yeah, most people get those instructions. Um, I'm going to give you a little challenge here. The, the only thing that's showing up right now is zero, zero. Can you change the window settings to make these points the star of the show? And again, settings are the little wrench over on the top right there. Can you change these window settings to something reasonable to make this all appear? So we go to the little wrench. Little wrench. Wrench is settings. There's my X settings, my Y settings. And it depends on your data. I'm going to start negative one because I like to have that little lead space up to six. Y, I like negative one again. Up to uh, 80 maybe, right? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. How did you, um, I put the Ys, but my X just type them in. You should be able to just type them in. Just type a two. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't know that. It doesn't understand that you may or may not want a consecutive. Yep. Okay. Here's my challenge for the next two minutes. Create a function which models this. Create a function which models this data. There's your challenge. Create a function which models the data. So if you put in y equals something, create a function. Yep. Create a function which models the data. Oh, you, just, you have to put two, three, yeah. It does not understand that you necessarily want consecutive x's. So you have to put them in. Because you might, it might be some other sort of data, right? Oh, I thought it was my, I'm just putting piling and it'd be disgusting. See if you can create a function which models this data. I'm sorry? How do you change the what? The color? The color. Uh, that one, if you hold that down, I think it's going to allow you. No, no, click it once. Now hold it down. Does that give me a choice? No, I hold, the bu hold the button down. Uh, I'm holding the button down. That should do it. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, okay. you, yeah, yeah. oh I had to use okay. yeah. the other one. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, left, you're doing it. Right click there. Okay. See if you can find a function which models this data. Can you find a function which models this data? 
All about modeling. Sliders work nicely. Kids, once the kids learn the sliders, they will latch on to that. That's on green. That's a good thing. Good fits, bad fits. Not easy. Yeah, so again, my X's, I wouldn't go to 20. I'd only go up to like six or seven because your X's, your domain is really only up to five, right? right. So yeah, my domain is only one through uh, zero through six. Well, one through five, right? What kind of function you have back there? What are we debating? Oh, linear, linear. linear model. Okay, how about zero, zero, though? Hmm? How about zero, zero? So I put zero, zero in mine. Yeah. Intentionally. Uh, yeah, I put zero, zero in. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I have two spots here that I put in by accident. I don't think it's not going to hurt it. I don't know if you can get rid of them, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything okay. to have them there. Yeah. So I'm just going to put zero, zero in. You're presenting this later, right? Yes, sir. I, was, I may not stay for the afternoon, but I was eager to see. So what sort of things are you doing with it? Can you give me the 30 second version? A little slower than you. Well, that's okay though. Yeah. Because some I'm of these people into, need like, the slower version. Graphs too, like, oh. Uh, when you have like a rational function. Yeah, that's cool. That's something they didn't have, I don't think, before. I think it's something more recent. Does it show? Oh, you, can, you can put. It. You can see like a whole. Yeah. You know, it like used to. On the 84s, I used to have kids zoom in on that spot and yes, create the noise. Like and game. Desmos used to do it. Too. Oh, no, if you zoom in enough on the old operating system, you'd make this noise. And uh, yeah, if you zoom in like 15 times on it, this noise appears because it doesn't know how to deal with it. And Desmos was doing that too. But yeah, they had the little, the hole you put in. They do. Yeah. They listen. And so they just added pictures and pictures was in response to people. Now, although I'm not able to get on mine necessarily here. I did one with, I, did one, I tweeted one out with Grimace yesterday. We'll see how that works. I'll get it, head back. All right, so here's what I see is that, and I didn't get a chance to look at everyone's, most people are trying some sort of a linear function here, right? right. Well, let's think about this. So zero, that's let's think about this. Yeah, zero, zero is down here, guys. I put zero, zero here intentionally. So I have a lot of people fit a very nice line to five points, but totally <laughs> disregarded this point. Zero, zero. So we could have to debate as to whether zero, zero really belongs or not. Um, yeah, it does or it doesn't. Well, but, but think about this. Let's think about context. Think about context. What does my x-axis represent? Okay, can we convert that to something else? The puffs. What do the puffs do? It's a volume unit. The puff is an ad hoc volume unit, right? What is the y-axis? So what sort of measurement? Circumference. Circumference, which is a linear measurement. So I have this volume measurement against a linear measurement. What type of model should this be? Cube root. Think about cube root. Watch how this works. Here's how you do a cube root. So if I do f of x equals, or actually, yeah, I want to do f of x. f of x equals, here's something that only math teachers love to get. If you type in nth root, nth root. Oh, oh yeah. Do you do that in any other room? People are like, oh, who cares? Made the okay. Cube root of x. Um, but also, I'm going to put a parameter in front of it. I'm going to, oh, I'm sorry, x, not a. I'm going to do a times the cube root of x. And I'm going to add a slider. Play, play, play. Oh, I'm sorry. Nth root. And all one root. All one word. Nth root. All one word. Seven letters. Nth root. If you want to change this a little bit, you can change these slider settings. Slider settings. Click on the end. You can change these settings. If I want to go from 0 to 10, but I want to count by point ones, I can do that. Play, play, play. You might discover something here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, given your restrictions, could you not use a log? Um, within context, I really think it's a cube root, but you could also, yeah, within stat, you might see it as... I, I, don't know if, I, I think you might find a log that fits, but I think I'd have trouble justifying why a log model is appropriate. Besides the fact it happens to fit. Because not only do I want to fit, I want to be able to defend why. Because it levels off like the air would. But it doesn't fit the context there as well. It does level off, which implies a log function. But I don't know if I can justify why the relationship between puffing the balloon and measuring it is a log relationship. I want to be able to cross that, you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to cross it. That would probably fit very nicely. What you should see here, this happens almost all the time, is that this should fit. Oh, I need to go higher. Okay, let me say this again. If you click the 10, 
Click the 10, guys. This is where you can do your slider settings. So I probably need to go up higher. I can make you, let's go up to 30. Let's see if that does it. Up, 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 up. Oh, I need to go higher than that. Okay. Let's go up to 50. I need to go higher, higher, higher. And you will get something pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty good, right? Except for someone who let us down here at their second puff. I'm not diming anyone out or anything like that. <laughs> someone in the room. <laughs> really? <laughs> effort, people, effort. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And in terms of statistics, in terms of statistics, I want to look at the differences. I'm going to do something that's a little bit advanced here. This might lose some people if I haven't lost you already. Um, I, want to I want to take the observed number minus the expected number. I'd like to take the y's and subtract them from the f of x's. If I go back to the table now, I can add a column that says just that. I want to take the y's minus the f of x's. And there are all of my residual values. Desmos is not very statistical. They're still wrapping their head around things like regression. And frankly, I don't think they're going to get, uh, as an AP stat teacher, Desmos is not going to replace TI for AP stat. I still need them to have the, oops, I still need to have the calculator and things. Um, but you can still think about regression. You should have still have these ideas in there. That's one of those things they get harped about. Can you do regression? And I think they're kind of pushing back a little bit on that. So I can play around with this and I can try to minimize these. And also visually, notice that they're on the bottom. There's my residuals here. So I can move up to kind of see those. I can observe those. I can hold this down and connect them together if I wanted to. And I can look, why is it connecting those guys? Um, why is it connecting? Oh, because I do them out of order, dummy. Um, it's connecting five to zero because I didn't do zero first. So it's going back and doing that one. So a little, yeah. I didn't realize I was going to do that. There's something I learned. It connects them in order. That's interesting. So maybe I don't want to connect them. Let's not connect them then. So I could play around with this slider a little bit and watch those residuals, and it looks like I'm always going to get that shape, and I can see what the best fit is, and I can defend it. Okay? Okay. okay. We have about 10 minutes left. All right. I want to be, make sure I show you two last things. Um, one is another discovery thing, and then I want to show you pictures, and then it's wonderful lunchtime. Um, one last thing. So I taught Algebra 2 last semester, for the, and I'm under block scheduling, for the first time in maybe six or seven years. And because of shifts in curriculum, all of a sudden I had to teach parametric equations, which frankly I had never taught before. And I thought about how am I gonna teach parametric equations? So already if you're a middle school or an algebra one person, you're probably like me where you thought, well, I wouldn't even know where to start to teach parametric equations. So I had to think about, well, one, I have to think back in my own memory banks, but then how am I gonna get this idea across to kids? So I'm gonna show you how I did this. Um, if you go back to my webpage, I'm actually crossing my fingers that there's a file there that I want there to be. Uh, is parametrics here? Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. Intro to parametrics. The sheet that I gave the kids is in your packet. It has four big boxes on it, okay? Do I have that here? Yeah. It has four big boxes on it, okay? So open the Desmos, so I provide them with links. I don't know if that's the current link. It's on my webpage. I don't know if that one's gonna work. We'll have to see. It looks different than the one I have there. The link contains four examples. Your job is to describe what is happening. Yeah, there's copies up here if you walked in late. Your job is to describe what's happening in each example. Instruction, so let's open it first and see. So if I open it up, I get, I get this, okay? There are four examples. Nothing is appearing right now because these circles are blank. If you click the circle by example one, it'll show up and you're going to start animating the slider. So two things again. I am going to click the dot by example one and I'm gonna animate that slider. Notice I can do animation here. And the other thing I did is I threatened the kids with bodily harm with opening the folders. You may not open the folders. The folders give away the secrets. And none of the kids did, thank God. So again, we're opening it up. And I'm playing with this. And again, you can play this. And I got some speed options here. So you can do animations. If you think like Sketchpad, you can do some cool animations here. If you want to make a little Y equals MX plus B animation, you can do that. So their job in this box was to describe what was happening. And their job was to do that for all four of these, is to describe what you see. So feel free to go ahead and click, don't open the folders, some of you probably have already, click the little dots and describe what is happening. And I wanted the kids to think about, okay, what, what's happening here? Why is that moving? What, the question to them was, what do you think's in the folder? That was the eventual question. What do you think's in that folder? Okay. And you can, we can make them all animate at the same time if we wanted to. So there's example one, there's example two. Oh, it's another one. 
Okay? And the discussions afterwards were rich in that there was a real debate going on. Some kids thought, oh, it's just y equals mx plus b, and this slider's just moving it. But then some kids thought about, well, why is it stopping and starting where it is? Why is it doing that? How come it just bounces back again? It would just go on forever. Why is it bouncing back again? And what's causing that point to travel that way? And example three, we'll do the same thing. I think it's a quadratic. Yeah, and then I had this one, which that's like the cherry on the Sunday there, the one that's going around. How could it be something that's going around like that? Oh, it's not a function. What does that mean? Okay. So the kids eventually, and it was actually my kid who was struggling the most. So some kids were saying what they thought in the folder was, I asked them, what do you think A is controlling? And some kids just thought it was Y equals M A plus B, no, A X plus B or something like that. But it was, how could it just be one point that's causing that to occur? So some kids thought A is controlling X somehow. So A is somehow uh, a variable that's controlling X and therefore it graphs it. And other kids said, well, no, no, I think maybe he did reverse the process, maybe it's A that's controlling Y. And I finally got one kid from the corner room who said, oh, I think A is controlling X and Y at the same time. Oh, that's parametric. I have one number, one variable here, that's controlling both things. So if you haven't already, go ahead and open the folders. What's happening here is, I have a point that's moving that is defined by both. The X is 2A plus 5, and the Y is A. And this is one of those instances where I sent this out to Desmos, actually tweeted it out and said, give me feedback on this parametric um, thing I made. I wanted other teachers to respond. And Desmos said, hey, wait a minute, we're going to make that better for you. They put in these little paths, which do the job for me, which are pretty awesome. So it was the idea of them taking it and improving it for me. And as I started to teach parametrics, let me get rid of a couple of these. One of the things the kids, if you ever taught, how many people here have taught parametrics that's something you do? It's probably not many of you, okay? So I'll make, I'll make this really short then. One of the things kids have trouble wrapping their head around with parametrics is the idea of things coinciding. Like these, lines meet. As lines, they meet. As y equals mx plus b, they are a system, they meet. But as parametrics, they never coincide. And this shows that. I understand that their paths cross, but the points never are actually in the same point at the same time. And having this demonstration really took that argument to a level where they understood. Okay? And I'm going to abandon this one because we have five minutes left and I want to show you pictures and we're all set to go. Okay? Pictures are the last things that got added. Okay? Um, so imagine this. So you're in your Algebra 1 class and you want kids to somehow think about slope. And you want them to find a picture of something that has an interesting slope to it. Okay? What you can do, go ahead and Google somewhere. Find a picture of something that you think has an interesting slope. Make it a roof. Make it a, I can't think of it, a ski slope, uh, think of a playground. Find something that has an interesting slope. On the iPads, this may be a little bit trickier. This might be, yeah, this might be a little, because yeah, you gotta leave and come back, and, or make a new tab. I have to wrap my head around. This might be a little trouble to multitasking, okay? So find something that's interesting. See, let's see what I can find here. Um, I'm thinking algebra two wise. I'm gonna find something that, uh, uh, let me see if I can find a uh, water uh, fountain. Fountain, water. And we'll look at our images. Oh, uh, there I'm looking for. I'm looking for a good parabolic type of thing. Oh, there's a good one. I'm gonna take this one. There we go. I got some neat, I got a neat couple neat things going on there. Okay? So I'm gonna find a picture. Okay? I'll be honest, I haven't done pictures that much. I may mess this up. I think I have to save it because there is a picture option on Desmos. If you click here, you have a picture option. You can insert an image. Why don't you come up? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's going to ask me for a file. So whatever you have, and I don't know how this is going to work on these computers. If you can right-click your picture and save it to the desktop, is it going to let you do that? I don't know. Is it going to let you do it? I don't know how successful we're going to be with that. You want to save it to the desktop? Yeah, well, that's where I put it, just so I can find it later. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take my picture. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to save image as uh, NGA Fountain. Sounds good to me. Save it to the desktop. I'll come over to Desmos. I'm going to insert a picture, an image, and hopefully in the desktop there's, oh, there it is, NGA Fountain. And, oh, I should have made a new, I should have made a new file and I didn't. And there it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm flying now because we've got like four minutes left. I right clicked the picture, I did save as, I put on the desktop, and then I went to the plus sign here, I did a picture, and it asks you, it gives you that box to say where it is. It should be on your desktop. And I have it there. Okay. So now, could kids, could you make sliders? Their assignment is to show me one and show me the equation that goes with it. Okay? So we have a nice one. That's kind of neat. A peak. Put a fountain in there. Looks nice. Notice the things you can manipulate. How many people teach geometry? 
You can make the size sliders. If I do 18 by 10, I can tell to do 18A times 10 B, I can make A and B sliders, and this isn't going to work real well because I already have an A slider and I didn't start a new document like an idiot, but I can make an A and a B slider and I can talk about dilations. Huh? I told it right where size is instead of 18 by 10, which is I guess the size of the picture, I told it 18A and 10B, or 18W and 10L. Is that neat? So you can talk about dilations, okay? This is, all right, at the beginning of this session, I said your lives are gonna be changed. Are your lives changed? You're gonna use this, hopefully. Okay. I hope you have a chance to use this in your classroom. I know lunchtime is calling. I'll stick around for questions and things. If you have anything for me, I'll stick around. But otherwise, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, you're welcome, yes.